Hi everybody, um, you're here with Sinead and you're also here with Nicole. Nicole is a money manager and she is a money expert. So today she'll be answering questions for us um, about how we can manage our money during COVID-19, how we can manage our money as a single parent um, or if we're on a tight budget. And she's also going to give us the keys to generational wealth building. So Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks so much for having me, Sinead. Um, my name is Nicole Simons, like you just mentioned. I am a wealth management advisor with CPN Financial Services. Um, so this actually is a family business. Um, my father started CPN Financial over 30 plus years ago. He was an advisor himself. And fast forward to about nine years ago, myself uh, joined the join the business and my siblings are also in the business as well so i help predominantly women uh, build and create wealth through investing and i also help make sure families are financially protected with life insurance wow nice so your family is the epitome of generational wealth <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say so for sure. My dad started, you know, this this business years ago. I'm sure with hopes that we would all join, uh, although there was no pressure. But we eventually all did join the business. Um, my brothers and myself all came from different backgrounds prior to getting into finance, but we love it now, and we wouldn't have it any other way. That's so awesome. So part of the initiative that I formed recently is called Rebuilding Healthy Homes, and it's all about I'm creating a clear picture for healthy homes. So I don't think a healthy home necessarily is, okay, I'm gonna teach you how to buy a house, you're gonna buy the house, and here's the keys, and kumbaya. No, I think a healthy home requires um, strong money management strategies for the long-term wealth gain, good communication, um, peace, love, all the good foundational building blocks. So I'm happy to have you here today because I have so much questions about um, building wealth, sustaining wealth, and healthy um, money management. But before we go into that, um, COVID-19 has impacted a lot of our lives, uh, um, and it's also impacted a lot of people's employment. So um, my audience definitely has been a mix. I have some people who have got laid off, not knowing if they're going to go back to work, and I've had some people um, who are still working, but are self-employed, don't know what's next, or single parents struggling. It's an unknown time. So what suggestions and advice do you have during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you're 100% right. There is a huge mixture of people that have been affected by this. Um, yeah. All of us, of course, have been affected in one shape or another. Absolutely. But definitely, if you're a business owner or self-employed, it may have hit you, you know, a lot harder than others as well. Yeah. Um, I would encourage everybody, well, first of all, let me say that, Thank God, you know, uh, due to our government has put, of course, some type of economic stimulus in place, right, where a lot of us can take advantage of the emergency benefit. So a lot of people are getting by just on that alone or EI, right? Um, but I think it's important, like, during this time period for people kind of just to take a step back and look at their current financial picture. And what I mean by that, it's important to kind of take a look at your current spending habits. I know a lot of us aren't going out anymore and are, aren't able to go to restaurants and do all the things that we're used to doing. Um, but for a lot of people, that's actually created some surplus in their bank accounts yeah. because due to us not going to work every day, a lot of us aren't taking transit. That means that those are some monthly costs that aren't being spent. And for some people, if they're still getting their full pay working from home, like I just mentioned, there might be a surplus. So it's important to kind of really take a step back and see how you can use this whole situation to kind of propel you further in your financial journey. Yeah. And uh, what I mean by that would be if there is a surplus, take a look at what you can do with it. I mean, you can create an emergency fund, which number one Everybody should be on an emergency fund bandwagon right now because clearly everybody can see now what an emergency fund can help with, right? Mm -hmm. When this whole situation started, most people didn't even have a month's rent or mortgage saved to be able to pay their bills the following month, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. So 
creating an emergency fund is paramount right now, right? And that can range anywhere from at least three to six months of living expenses to have that. So maybe use that surplus to start that fund. Um, you may want to tackle any debt. A lot of us, you know, are struggling with uh, lines of credit, student loans, credit cards, a lot of high interest debt. Maybe you want to take some of this money that you have, you know, extra to put towards high interest debt, right? This is the time that you want to take advantage of to kind of propel you further. So you're suggesting that step one is to just break down all of your debts or all of your assets or all of the bill payments that you have into one maybe Excel sheet. Um, I have a financial tracker that I use, but I'm sure you have one as well that you can potentially share with us. Yeah, I mean, I don't, those are basically all over the internet. I mean, if you haven't used a budget before, now's definitely a time to do so. If you just Google, you know, financial budget, you'll definitely find sheets that you can pull up. But yeah, as Sinead was just saying, you want to take a look at all your immediate essential expenses. So your rent or your mortgage, your gas, your hydro, uh, okay. car insurance, all of those things that have to come out, right? And then on top of that, you want to take a look at, it, at some of the frivolous things that are not essential. For example, Netflix, um, other type of movie subscription, things that we enjoy, but don't necessarily need, right? So you're going to kill us, <laughs> kill us right now <laughs> if we don't have Netflix. And all we have I know. is you're right. Netflix, Netflix has been getting a lot of people through this time right now, including myself. But I'm just saying, if you are someone, for example, who yeah. don't, doesn't have a surplus, not everybody has a surplus. A lot of people are literally paycheck to paycheck. Then looking at subscriptions and things like that and cutting them down, those are some ways to, I'm saying, help keep money in your account. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So definitely, you guys, I think the biggest takeaway is to create a budget for yourself to understand where you are. And, you know, I know a lot of people who live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're in, in self-employed, deal to deal. So, I mean, getting yourself organized and figuring out what's next and how to manage your funds is like super key. But yeah, no. are struggling before this and then this comes and happens and then they're struggling even more after this. So it's like, what happens next to the, you know, so many people are having a hard time. And I feel like, you know, I've heard the sentiment saying, I'm so grateful for EI and I'm so grateful for CREB, but it's not enough. Like, it's, yeah, it's, it's not enough. It's, it's, it's not enough. And, yeah. you I know, mean, it's this thing, but it's something and, it, and it's helping people get through, but it's very evident that people are still struggling. And, you know, like I said, my heart goes out to those that really don't have the money to necessarily put away in, a, in an emergency fund. Um, but I mean, that is something that is definitely essential to either start doing now if you can, or that may be the first thing you want to start doing after we get over this COVID-19 hurdle to get that started. Yeah, you know, like on the real, I'll tell you for even myself, just to keep it a hundred, mm -hmm. since this happened, I sat there and I told myself, your number one goal this year or in the next two years, you gotta pay off a couple mortgages and just make sure that you just cash flow. Because at the end of the day, it, you know, you can't really rely on the government to help support you in case your business tanks or in case you lose your job. So you have to be able to, and real estate's not the only place you can make money, but it's a good, it's a good start. Um, mm -hmm. I said 100%, you know, there needs to be a way for um, us as a collective to ensure that we have a safety net. 